Well, for you viewers out there, it's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy, and we're broadcasting the new uh, show you've come to know as BCTV's Nightly News Roundup, 5.45 live from the deck of the River Garden. We'll talk more about why we're down here in a second. But first, Joe, what do we got on deck for tonight? Well, all right, Roland. Tonight, we've got Daniel Ellsberg in town, NEYT's original play on bullying, Daryl talks decrim in Montpelier, and much more, all in 15 minutes here on 5.45 live. I made a judgment that just so I wouldn't cause any problems, I ought to take the day off and sit in the audience. This is Tim's job, and he's done a magnificent job over the years. Uh, I'm just stepping in and uh, pinch hitting, that's it. Welcome back to this March 30th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy. That's footage of Tim O'Connor at last Saturday's representative town meeting in Brattleboro where he passed the moderator gavel after 22 years of service to local attorney Lauren Crisp who filled in. We were on the scene there, Joe, uh, to catch a clip of him. Now, Thanks Tim O'Connor uh, has in uh, sort of an ancillary way fallen back into the news today with his daughter, Kate O'Connor. Kate O'Connor, she was in town to introduce uh, her book that she'd written about her time on the campaign trail with our Dean. She was in town last week and we've got some footage of that. So it was like there was just sort of these odd things like that that would happen along the way. I don't know what, if, if Howard can remember his... <laughs> my, 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 my wow was, uh, was the convention because people were actually weeping standing in the seats throwing checks at us. All right, moving on, we're going to head up north to Montpelier where, Joe, uh, you went up there with former uh, Rep. Daryl Pillsbury to talk about, uh, among other things, decriminalization of marijuana. Tell us a little bit about that trip, then we'll roll the, the clips. And Yes, we did. It was a beautiful day, beautiful weather for a visit to the State House and for uh, former Representative Pillsbury, it was like old home days. Uh, he probably spent as much time greeting everybody that has missed his presence there as anything, but uh, we did manage to get some conversations off with Senator Phil Baruth and Senator Joe Benning, and we talked with them. They're the two sponsors or two co-sponsors of uh, the bill in the House that originally started as S-134, uh, uh, um, decriminalization of marijuana possession penalties of sorts, and uh, there was uh, there was no action on that for a while, and then uh, there was some more action. Uh, you'll see in the clips uh, they describe it a little bit more, and uh, it may go somewhere this session, it may not, but uh, those two senators are definitely working for that cause. So, and Daryl had a few other conversations uh, with Senator Ash, Senator Aluzzi, Senator Galbraith also while we were up there. Talking about the transmission lines, among other things, uh, how uh, Senator Galbraith really believes strongly that uh, it'll be a serious mistake akin to uh, missing the purchase of the dams if we uh, miss out on the purchase of those transmission lines. So uh, take a look at the footage and see what you think. The way that you want to approach this is you take somebody who is from the conservative neck of the woods, you join them with somebody who is from the more liberal neck of the woods, and you do it together. Because if a liberal comes in and tries to do it, most people are gonna say, ah, oh, there's another liberal trying to get a marijuana thing in. Right. If a conservative does it alone, they're gonna be looked like a lunatic. Um, but if two people do it together, it has a much better chance of gaining some traction. And sure enough, it got traction. So that's what got me into this discussion. Longtime running mate of Joe Bushy's and occasional 545 Live specialist Daryl Pillsbury in Montpelier last week talking about, uh, among other things, the decriminalization of marijuana. That full broadcast, which includes all the stuff Joe was talking about, including Peter Galbraith and more, uh, will be available next week on BCTV's Video On Demand and will be running on Channel 8 as well. You can find all that stuff at brattlebrotv.org. All right, Joe, to move on for the stories, I'll turn you loose on it again with uh, Daniel Ellsberg. Here. All right. Uh, well, here we go. The man Richard Nixon once called a punk. Former military analyst and advisor Daniel Ellsberg was in town last night for a dual presentation at BOHS and the Latches Theater to accompany the showing of the film The Most Dangerous Man in America about, among other things, Ellsberg's attempts to end the Vietnam War with the release of the now infamous Pentagon Papers. BCTV producers Wendy German and Maria Dominguez were there to capture the rapid-fire 80-year-old as he recounted tales from a life flying the face of the world's most powerful governments. I remember the day that Nixon made the comment about me, it's quoted there, 
and I was met at an airport. I was coming back from somewhere, and Connie Chung, remember her? She met me at the airport somehow, and she said, what do you think about Nixon calling you a punk this morning? And I said, oh, I thought that was very restrained of him. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure that he, he had many other words in mind that he chose not to use, and he definitely had been more interested in me than was good for him, it turned out. All right, moving on, we'll talk NYT youth performers from the New England Youth Theater have written an hour-long semi-improv piece about bullying, a hot topic here in Vermont and, of course, across all of America. It's produced by Stephen Stearns um, and uh, as part of their actor troupe. They're taking it from school to school all around the area. They were at Oak Grove School on Wednesday where BCTV Access Coordinator Frederick Noyes was there to catch some of what is being uh, heralded as a truly spectacular performance. Travel two. Standing up for yourself. Celia, what are you doing with my backpack? By the way, what are you doing? <sighs> She's a total pest. I don't want little kids looking through my backpack. So you're gonna kick her? She deserves it. Have you thought about what would happen if you really hurt her or about how she feels? Celia, what's going on? She's going to kill me. She's way stronger than me. You're strong too, Celia. Stand up and face her. Come on, stand up. Stop! Leave me alone! Catch the full broadcast of that performance of NEYT's piece on bullying and an all-original piece taped by BCTV Access Coordinator Frederick Noyes next week, BCTV Channel 8, and as all BCTV videos are, uh, you can find them online and watch them on your uh, at your pleasure on our video on demand at rattlerotv.org. All right, moving on. Uh, for anybody that lives in a cave out there, Obama is in Vermont as we speak. Been a long time since a U.S. president traveled to this here fair state. Of course, not in Brattleboro. He's up north in Burlington. But BCTV Access Coordinator Frederick Noyes was on the scene, or on a scene of sorts. Hey, Roland. I just happened to be walking uh, by the monitor here to see that the president's up in uh, Burlington today uh, doing a little... Uh Speech, maybe a stump speech, according to the lower third here anyway. They say it's a re-election speech. I thought it was a little bit more of a supporting the Democrats and raising some, uh, some money for the Democratic Party. But uh, either way, the president visiting. The first time a sitting president has been here in Vermont in at least 12 years, maybe longer. Our politics may be divided, but most Americans still understand that no matter where you come from, no matter who you are, we rise and fall together as one nation. All right, a few more things before we wrap up for tonight, including uh, on Saturday, opening of the Brattle Room Museum and Art Center's new exhibits at 11 a.m. BMAC members are invited to meet uh, the exhibiting artists at a champagne brunch reception uh, that'll celebrate this new exhibit. Uh, and then it opens to the public at 2 p.m. They're open until 5 if you want to check that out. All right, before we go, Joe, I'll throw it back over to you for a, uh, a public service advisory of sorts. For dogs and kids too, but dogs is what I heard today. Uh, it, as the temperatures start to rise and as we head towards summer, just a reminder to everyone out there not to leave your pets in your cars with the windows down a little bit, thinking it's okay. It's not. Don't bring them. Uh, take them out. Take them with you. But uh, don't leave the pets or the kids locked up in the car. Uh, it's not safe. It's not a good idea. And someone's going to see and call in. So make sure you uh, don't forget. Be safe. Be smart. All right, before we wrap, BCTV viewers catch uh, the full broadcast of BUHS TV, the high school's morning news advisory program that shows right after this program at 6 p.m. Also, uh, if you're a nocturnal type of person, Brattleboro Representative Town Meeting reshows two clicks up the dial on Channel 10 at midnight tonight. All right, uh, that's just about all I got. So, uh, I'll say, Joe, thanks for checking in with me uh, tonight right here on the desk. Uh, for BCTV and 545 Live, I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy. Thanks to our associate producers, Flosta Papelka and Nolan Edgar, along with our content specialists, Maria Dominguez, Frederick Noyes, Paige Martin, and Ian Keel. We'll be back Monday. See you then. Hey, Roland. Uh, Frederick, I'm up here in Burlington right now, and as you can see right behind me, um, some people are looking at something. Oh, and it's the president. Uh, running for re-election, according to WCAX. <laughs> That's great. In the hotly contested uh, Vermont race for the presidency, um, a razor-thin uh, <laughs> divide. Be, this will be good for the end credit, you know, the blooper to put in the end credit. <laughs>